okay um welcome back to module five so i'm glad you made it here so this is the fifth module of this course and today we are going to cover currency pairs it's good that if you're trading forex you should be able to differentiate which currency pair is which and which is which so you should understand that okay if i'm trading now i'll be focusing on major pairs or maybe on the other pairs so you should know the differences and you should know these other pairs and different pairs and how they you know can impact your trading so um this will be the last theoretical video that we're going to have this is the last course that we're going to have which is theory from the sixth course it's going to be practical it's going to be more of candlesticks so i want you guys to just cover this last chapter it's very very important i didn't want to make it but i said i must make it because so most of you already know um the different currency pairs but i promise you that people that do not so i want that even if you are or, or an intermediate trader you should take out some time to just watch this video you might just you know open your head somehow towards some certain things so i've just made um uh, some notes here for you guys so that's why when i when i make these videos and i have these notes on the screen it's not for me only it's not only for me to read from it but it's also for you guys to pause the video and take notes okay i keep it like this so you can maybe have a book to just jot some things that you need not every material here will you need but the material that you think you need you can pause the video write it down so let's get started. Currency pairs. We already know what currency pairs are. I covered them in the other modules. So let's talk a little. Let's just talk a little about um. Let's just talk a little on currency pairs. So what is a currency pair? Basically, a currency pair is what you call quotation and pricing structure of the currencies being traded in the forex market. The value of a currency is a rate, and it's determined by its comparison to another currency. So that is a pair. All right. So let's get it. Let's continue here. So forex trades involve the purchase of one currency and the sale of another at the same time. But when you look at the currency pair, you can easily think of it as a single unit, an instrument you can buy or sell. And that is exactly how it is. An example of a currency pair is euro against the US dollar, or most commonly known as euro USD. For those of you who already know what, um, you know, I told you guys, some of you watching this video already know much about currency pairs so you already like but the beginners will not so they might see your usd they might not really understand why why is there euro usd why, like you understand so i just want to open your head on that so your usd is two different pairs that have come together to form it's two different currencies that have been plugged together to give a pair to form a pair so this euro here is the base currency and usd here is the quote currency so their exchange rate is what is being compared here and that is exactly how you determine their value so i told you guys um also known as what well, also known as one of the uh, widely traded currency pairs okay in this pairing the first listed currency pair usd is referred to as the base currency while the second currency euro is referred to as the quote currency the currency pair will indicate the amount of the quote currency you will need in order to purchase one unit of the base currency if you decide to buy a currency pair, you are buying the base currency and will be selling the quote currency. Meanwhile, when you sell the currency pair, you will be selling the base currency and you will be receiving the quote currency. Okay, so that is exactly how it works. So if you have a setup on Euro USD and you're looking to take a buy, you have to know that, okay, if you're buying Euro USD, you're automatically selling US dollar because it's the last pair. You feel me? But if you're selling Euro USD, Therefore, you're buying USD, which is the last pair. So let's do it. Okay. Types of currency pairs. Now, this is what I really wanted you guys to pay attention to, not the first part. So now we have to see the different types of currency pairs because not every currency pair is the same. Some move more than some and some are widely traded than some. So what you want to do is you want to stick with the pairs that are widely traded. You want to stick with the pairs that a lot of people are more, you know, looking, they're looking at. So you cannot just go on a, on a dominant pair. There are dominant pairs out there. That you can have that they're not really they're, they're really dominant when you look at them you look at the price structure you look at the charts you look at the market structure it's just it's just it's just wayward because there's not really a lot of volume traded on these pairs so we're going to look at those different kinds of pairs so you can you know have a watch list so before the end of this video you are going to have a watch list to me a watch list is like the pairs that you'll be looking at or what you're going to be trading because these are the pairs that i trade as well so we are going to have the same watch list that way we can be trading the same and taking the same trades easy. 
Okay, types of currency pairs. So there are three types of currency pairs available across the globe. These are the major currency pairs, minor currency pairs, and exotic currency pairs. Okay, these are the three types of pairs, all right? So you have major, you have minor, and you have exotic. So now let's see what they mean and what we can use that for. Okay, you should keep in mind that there are as many currency pairs as there are currencies in the world. Okay, the total number of existing currency pairs change alongside the currencies that come and go. If you mean the currencies that come and the currencies that go. So if a new currency is added, then we're going to have a new currency pair. And if a pair currency is removed, then we are no longer going to have that currency to trade for. So brokerage firms offer you an opportunity to trade any existing currency pair in the world. All of the currency pairs are categorized according to the amount of volume being traded on a daily basis as a pair. You feel me? As a pair. How much is being traded on this pair compared to how much is traded on this other pair? So that is how they have been measured. And that is how we see the major pairs from the minor pairs and from the exotic pairs. So um, what did I say again? We will discuss them further in the detail below. So look at this detail below. Now let's start with major pair currency pairs, right? So these are the pairs that you really want to pay attention to. These are the pairs that we trade. These are the pairs that I trade because they are major pairs and they move quite well because why? These are the pairs that are widely traded by the globe, okay? So all of the existing major pairs have the US dollar on the side, either as a base currency or quote currency, okay? They are considered to be the most traded pairs in the foreign exchange market. The major currency pairs also offer the lowest spread and are known to be the most liquid. The Euro USD pair actually holds 30% of the entire trade volume of the foreign exchange market. The major currency pairs include, guys, Euro USD, feel me? It's like, when it comes to Forex, Forex is foreign exchange, right? It's currencies, we're dealing with currencies here. So the biggest, the biggest currency pair that you can trade is Euro USD. That's the biggest, that's the strongest and the most traded. It is strongest because it's the most traded. You feel me? A lot of people all over the world are trading this particular pair. So that's why it makes it the, the most strongest and the most reliable pair that you can maybe like, you know, yeah. So if you go to my watch list now, you see that most of the pairs that I trade have Euro and they have US dollar to it. Euro is a very strong pair as well. So we have Euro, we have US dollar, GBP card, GBP, USD, USD card. You see, so it's USD, USD something or something USD or Euro something or GBP something. These are the pairs, so the major pairs. Now let's look at the major pairs here. These are the major pairs listed here. So we have Euro USD, which is, you know, Euro US dollar, right? Then we have GBP here. We have United Kingdom against the US dollar. So this is just like the, the definition. So in case you see the, if you see the ticker here and you don't know what it is, you can read it. So this is NZD USD. NZD here is New Zealand dollar against the US dollar. So you have to see that all of these pairs here, they end with what? They end with your, with USD. It's either they are starting with USD or they're ending with USD. So these are the major pairs. When you see any pair like this, you know that that is a major pair. So we have USD JPY, we have USD card, we have AUD card, we have, um, sorry, AUD USD, we have USD chef. This chef here is Swiss franc. So these are the pairs that you want to have on your watch list. So make sure you go on your watch list and add all of these pairs, these major pairs here, all of it. All of these pairs. I don't know if you can pause the video here and screenshot this. So I'm assuming you've done that already. Now let's continue over to the minor pairs, which is the second one here. So these pairs, we are not really going to pay too much attention to, but there are a few of them that we still trade. Let's look at it. So the minor currency pairs are also commonly referred to as the cross currency pairs or simply crosses. These currency pairs do not contain the US dollar. Minor currency pairs are known to have slightly, you know, wider spreads and are not liquid as the major, but still sufficiently liquid uh, markets. So, we have pairs here that widen up their spreads too often, but still, they still have a good amount of volume being traded on it, but not as strong as the major pairs. So that's why they're on the second category. So these are the second graded pairs. So you have the first graded, second graded, and the third graded. So now this is second graded here. So these are the pairs that we are going to trade. Let's just forget about all of that. Let's look at the pairs that we are going to trade on this second graded um, pairs. So now we're going to look at Euro GBP here. That is a pair that you want to trade. So you're going to add this up on your watch list. Add Euro, um, Euro GBP. 
I want you to add Euro card. Euro card is a pretty strong pay as well. I want you to add Euro NZD. I want you to add card JPY here. I want you to add AUD JPY. And that'll be it. So once you've added these pairs, there are four pairs that I've listed here in this um um second B grade, this second graded stuff. Okay. I mentioned a Euro um GBP, I mentioned Euro card. I mentioned Euro NZD, I mentioned Euro JPY, I mentioned CAD JPY, AUD JPY, okay? So, um, so, did I mention AUD JPY? No, forget about AUD JPY, even though we still trade it. I still take trades on this AUD JPY though. So you can add AUD JPY here and even NZD. So we trade, these are the most, these are the two um categories that we trade, the A and the Bs, okay? So you're going to put all the pairs on A's and put all the pairs on B's, except for this chef, except for this one. So you have to add all the pairs here, except for this last one, okay? So these are the pairs you're going to use as highlighted, all of these pairs, all of it. You use all of these pairs and these ones, except for the last one here, this chef, don't use it. Good. We already have a watch list. Now let's go down to this, Um, there's still more even. This is GBP card, add this one too, add GBP card, add GBP JPY here, and that's it, we call it a day. Add these two, GBP card and GBP JPY. These are good pairs. I trade them. All right. Now let's look at exotic pairs, which are like the, <laughs> should we really look at this? But let me just, let me just go through it real quick. The exotic currency pairs are made up of those in the uh, emerging markets. You see, there are a huge difference in the liquidity of this type of currency pair, which compares to, um, the, uh, to the other two. Okay. So the spreads on exotic currency pairs are also much wider. Exotic currency pairs are usually um, made up of major currency pairs or and one currency of another emerging economy. So such as Hong Kong, Singapore, or Mexico and uh, exotic currency pairs include. So now let's look at it now. You have um, here, you have USD, SGD. I've not really seen this one before because I've never really like even thought for one second that I should add it on my watch list because <laughs> guys, you're going to see something, you know, your eyes don't want to see. You're going to see spreads like from, like you're going to see spreads like 10 centimeters thick. You feel me? That's how bad it is, the spreads. And you know what spreads are? Spreads is the difference between the bid price and the ask price. So if I'm looking to buy for 500 and this guy is looking to sell for 5,000, the spread there is 4,500. That's the spread. That's like charges that you will pay for that trade. So it's bad. You don't have to enter trades that have this wide spread. You feel me? So all of this space here is condemned. There's nothing here you want to work with. You feel me? So you only work with this with the B and the A graded um currency pairs. So with that, let's just go through this short note here, guys. This is very important. If you've watched to this extent, I want you to just finish this video here. Okay, it's very very important. Risk and tips every forex trader should know. Okay, there are different types of risks that you should be aware of as a forex trader. Here are some of them. So pay attention. Screenshot this copy notes, do whatever you have to do to keep this information. It's very important. You feel me? So um, leverage risk. Leverage can prove to be, um, to be both beneficial and risky. The higher your leverage, the better your profit. Despite that, you should also keep in mind that your losses can also increase um, the higher your gets, the higher your leverage gets. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me take that back. Despite that, you should also keep in mind that your losses can also increase the higher your leverage gets. You feel me? So if you have a higher leverage, you can get more profits because now you have extra money being lended to you by the broker to, you know, buy a certain quantity of a commodity in the market. If you want to buy something, but you don't have enough money to be able to afford it, the broker will give you a leverage. They'll give you like extra money from what you have to add to it. It's not like your balance is going to increase though but they're just going to increase your ability to purchase that particular commodity at that point in time. So now, if you're able to pass, win that trade, you're going to have really high profits because, you know, like it has multiplied everything. But if that trade works, if that trade does not work out, you're going to also multiply your losses. So that's how bad it is. It's a good and a bad side. You have to be aware of that risk. It's a risk. You can use it to your advantage and you can also use it to your disadvantage. So interest rate risk, okay? The moment the country's interest rate rises, the currency will strengthen. The boost in strength can be attracted to an influx of investment in that country's assets. Since with a stronger currency, higher return can be more likely. 
But if the interest rate falls, the currency will weaken, which may result in more investors withdrawing their investments. Um, if you are a complete beginner, you might not understand this, but for intermediate traders that have been trading for a while, you notice that sometimes when you're in the market, you just suddenly see the market sh shooting in one direction, like those are interest rates, those are news events coming out and everything. So it's really risky sometimes when you're trading, you might just open a position and before you even get to place your stop loss, the market just moves fast and boom, just blows your account before you even enter the stop loss. So that's why you're going to start trading like me and we are not going to be opening trades before we put the stop loss. We are putting everything at the same time. So we use limit orders, you place your limit order, you put your stop loss. As you click the button, everything goes to the market at the same time, meaning if it triggers and it decides to fly over, you already have a stop loss set. You don't have to go back to set it. So I'm going to make sure you guys are safe on that end. So transaction risk. This risk is an exchange rate risk that can be associated with the time difference between the, the different countries, okay? It can take place sometimes between the beginning uh, and the end of a contract. There is a chance that during the 24 hours, exchange rate might change, even more set, uh, settling a trade. Okay, the, the, what is this? The currencies might be traded in different prices and different times during the trading hours. The transaction risk increases the greater the time difference between entering and settling a contract. So um, what this means is sometimes you notice that when you, when you send your order to the market, like if you want to buy something now, you click on buy. It's not just going to buy immediately. You click on buy, it has actually gone, but you, it does not reflect on your trading app immediately. It's pending. So that transaction time is detrimental. It's really detrimental because it's still, you know, processing. And this is as a result of what? Change in exchange rate and everything. So it's trying to like, uh, you know, set you up on a new rate or what's going on. Um, so these things do happen. These are glitches in the market. When you see this, don't feel like, oh, it's a glitch or they're manipulating. No, it's not manipulating. It's all real things. That's what I'm telling you. So when you're trading, you'll be seeing these things every day. Sometimes there are some period of the day where you see spreads to just get up and widen up. You, you feel me? Here in Cameroon, it's mostly around 10, 10.30, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 p.m., 10.30. 10 you see that spread to widen up, then it'll tighten up back. So these are things that, you, these are phenomena that you have to, you know, get yourself acquainted to. So when you see them, you're not surprised. Oh, it's like, oh, why they did this to me to stop me out? No, nobody did anything to you, man. It's real. That's what I'm telling you now. So when, you, when we start trading, you have to be aware of these things. So if you skip this video, I'm sorry for you. Okay, now this, we're going to end this video here. Tips for beginners in the foreign exchange market. Okay, here are some tips that everyone in the forex exchange industry could use to help them succeed in the field. So take a screenshot, a copy as usual. Okay, I suppose you've done that already. Um, let's get started. Okay, learn as much as you can about forex exchange markets before you use your own money. That's the use for demo accounts. And that is why I'm telling you guys that we are going to we are going to start trading. When we start trading, you as a beginner, you will not be trading your money. You're going to be trading demo account. This is money that the broker will provide you to use in order to practice your, your strategy. When you feel confident about it, when you feel like, okay, you can bring this thing to real life, then you can put your money. Feel me? But I will not teach you to trade your money. Now we are going to teach you how to, to be able to manage an amount of money that is not real, but you're going to work with that. So when you have the skill that you need, then uh, 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 you can now go in there with your real money and start making some money for yourself. So let's go to the second point here. Don't push aside the task of finding a reputable broker. It might be as well as um, the make it or break it point of your trading journey. So if you have a bad broker, you are, you are doomed. You are really doomed because there are actually brokers out there that will fuck you up. They will fuck you up big time. So you have to be careful choosing your brokers. You can do some research on brokers, like brokers, best brokers. Uh, actually, people still recommend you bad brokers still, but... My own personal broker, I use Hanko Trade, and I want you guys to know because I don't have anything to hide. I use Hanko Trade. These are like, this is my broker, and they are very reliable, and they, they manage a lot of money. And I know a lot of big, big, you know, well known traders out there that I use on this um, particular broker. That's why I'm using it because I know big people that I look up to, like, like you know, my, 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 my <laughs> people, my idols, you feel me? They're using these brokers. So I, that's why I'm on Hanko Trade. I use Hanko Trade. So all these small, small brokers around the area, you should avoid them. 
So we have another one here. Never forget to use a practice account. The practice account is just what I was mentioning in the first one, the first um point there. Demo account. A demo account and a practice account is the same. So it's literally just fake money that you take trades on. You take losses on those trades. You take winning on these trades. You can be able to analyze everything. You can able you can you can be able to track your progress. You see where you're lagging. You see where you're improving. You see when you make all of these corrections now and you feel like okay now I'm good to go after a while of working with me. Then boom, I will confirm that. All right, I'll assess you and I'll tell you now you're good to go. I'm um, judging from what I'm seeing here. You can take on a profit account and you can start making money. Now let's go to the next part here. Smart. Um, start small. Sorry, 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 sorry. Once you're able to successfully create your trading account, protect it. Of course, you have to protect it. And this has to do with risk management, trade management, and everything that we are going to cover towards the ending of this course. So you should be able to stick around to then because if you don't stick around to then, you've wasted your time and money because that's the part where you want to, you know, pay attention. Risk management, that's what trading is about. It's not even trust strategy, man. You can trade as dumb as you can. You can just buy randomly, but if you can manage risk, you can still make money. I'm telling you. Now let's go down to the fifth point, I think. Start small when you think you are ready to go live. So when you're ready to go live, don't just take all your savings and dump it in on your house rent or your school fee and dump it in. No, you should probably look for your pocket money. Maybe your like your allowance, something that's small. I mean, like if you get a weekly allowance, you can use that one. Maybe next week you can learn your lesson. So don't just start big, start small. And uh, another point, keep your charts and records clean. You feel me? So if you look at my charts, let me show you guys my charts real quick. You can see my chart here. You see how beautiful my charts look, right? I don't have grids. I don't have grids on my, I don't have lines. I don't have indicators. I don't have any of those bullshit, all of these dirty things making your chart. Your chart should look clean. If possible, you can use one color theme to make sure that everything looks presentable. That way your brain can easily process information. Okay. Um, and when they speak of records, guys, they're speaking of um your trading journal. You feel me? If you take a trade, if you take a buy trade today, you should be able to get up tomorrow and understand exactly why you took that trade. So you should journal it down. You should write it down. I took a buy trade here, and this is the setup. Take a screenshot of it and keep it. You feel me? So we are going to go towards that. I'm going to make a video for you. And in that video, we're going to cover developing your trading plan and how you should follow it and abide by it. So let's continue now. Trading is not just a pastime. Um, you can treat trading as a business. So this is it. And we are ending here. So that point alone has explained itself. I don't need to tell you anything. Okay. So thank you guys for sticking around this far. If you enjoyed this episode, I want you to leave a like on this video. Um, you know, just click on the video and hold it. Emojis will come out there. Just put a heart. Let me know that you enjoyed it. And now we'll start, we're going to enter now into some really in-depth stuff. So we're going to enter now into price action itself. We're going to dive into candlesticks and charts. So brace yourself and it's time for, for us to have fun.